This video is going to be a follow-up to the installation of the Kraken G10 on the 780Ti Classified Kingpin Edition. The purpose of this video is to show how to do a custom modification to be able to retain the VRM and VRAM heat spreaders while installing the Kraken G10 onto the 780Ti Classified Edition. This modification will actually work on any of the EVGA graphics cards that have a VRAM or VRM heat spreader. I've seen some modifications that require cutting of the tabs that surround the GPU. This modification will not require any cutting or destruction to the card. Check out the description to this video to find the parts that you're going to need to do this modification. It's a very simple process and all it requires really is a copper shim and some custom screws and washers to be able to mount the G10 to the graphics card. First we need to remove the ACX cooler. There are only four screws that surround the GPU and then there is one small screw that is meant to stabilize the cooler onto the graphics card. So don't forget the small screw up in the corner. Once all the screws are removed, the cooler will simply just pull off. And don't forget there is a power connector connecting the fans to the PCB itself. Also in the description is a PWM fan header for the graphics card. If you want to control your cooling fans via the PWM header on the PCB of the graphics card. To be able to control all of the fans while doing this, you will also need a powered fan header which you'll connect to the PWM header that you connect to the graphics card as well as um, using a Molex connector to power all of the fans from your power supply. You can effectively use the fan header on the graphics card itself to power a single fan but do not connect more than one fan to the fan header. The graphics card fan header won't have enough power to power more than one fan. This is why the powered fan splitter is necessary if you want to power multiple fans. Another option is to use the PWM headers on your motherboard which is also an effective use and you can control each fan individually from your BIOS for your motherboard. The only problem with this method is that you're going to sacrifice case fan headers if you have multiple case fans set up on your rig. Make sure you get the GPU itself as clean as possible. I like to use a piece of paper towel to clean off the first and largest amount of the, the residue and then I start applying cleaner and then um, do some more touch up with paper towel. I choose to use paper towel for the initial cleaning just because it does a better job. Uh, eventually once we get things nice and shiny and very clean looking we will switch over to a coffee filter. I like to use things that are common around the household uh, and the coffee filter is much better for the final cleaning than paper towel because you can see some small bits of lint that the paper towel will leave behind which are um, not going to give you the most effective uh, heat dissipation away from the GPU. A coffee filter on the other hand will give you a nice lint free finish. Next we need to clean off the copper shim. So we will just use the same methods we use to clean the GPU, but apply those methods to the copper shim. It's very important not to touch the faces of the copper shim. Try and hold the edges. You don't want to get any of your skin oils on the copper shim. Your oils on your skin will have the same negative effect as lint would, as putting another barrier of non-conductivity between the GPU, the shim, and the thermal pace. As you can see I'm a little overly meticulous with the cleaning which is never a bad thing to have. Unless of course you're on a time crunch. Next we're going to apply the thermal paste. All we're going to need is a pea-sized drop right in the middle. Try to make as nice of a round little blob as you can. Uh, that one there was pretty ugly. 
Once you've got your blob, then try to lay the copper shim on evenly. The goal here is to keep from put, putting too much pressure on one side of the shim that's going to squeeze all the thermal paste out to one side. You want it to spread evenly underneath the shim. If you need to straighten it out, just grab something small and metal. A uh, paper clip would even work. I'm just using the tip from a screwdriver here just to straighten out the shim. The shim that I'm using here is a 20 millimeter by 20 millimeter. Um, it, it actually works very effective even though it doesn't fully cover the GPU. Um, if you could find one that was actually another two to four millimeters, maybe a 22 to 24 millimeter by 22 to 24 millimeter that would fit perfectly. You may have a little bit better cooling, but uh, the 20 millimeter works just fine. My temperatures never broke much beyond 60 degrees Celsius. Next we need to prepare the all-in-one cooler. I've got the Corsair H75 here. Uh, the H55 is also an excellent choice. Uh, it's essentially the H75 less one of the fans. So you may want to go with the H55. I just found a great deal on the 75, so bought it, sold both of the fans, and bought a couple of Noctua fans to put on it. This is the aftermarket hardware you're going to need. I've got a M2.5 30 millimeter screw. I've got a couple of nylon M2.5 washers and a nylon finishing washer. And of course you can reuse the thumb screws that came with your Kraken G10. First thing you want to do is take the nylon washer, put that on your 30 millimeter screw, and then place the finishing washer on top of that so the finishing washer rests against the back plate of the graphics card. The screws, I took the difficult way around doing this. Uh, you could probably get a piece of scotch tape to hold each of these in so you're not juggling them around. Um, I just chose to use my fingers to hold them in as I installed each one of them. Once you've got them in, just pull them up and try and get them as, as plumb as you possibly can, just by hand. Next, we're going to barely install the bracket onto the screws. Uh, this part is too difficult to do if you've got the cooler already installed into the bracket. So what we're going to do is we're going to line up the screws with the holes, but not push it down all the way yet. If you've got the small foam feet already installed on the bracket, it should help to hold the bracket off of uh, sliding down all the way to the graphics card. Next we're going to apply thermal paste again. Once again we're going to use the P method and put it right on top of the shim. And here be careful not to push down on the shim and squeeze the thermal paste below it out to one side. Essentially, we're going to use the all-in-one cooler, the Ace Tech style cooler face, to spread the thermal paste by tightening it down little by little at a time, and hopefully that'll give us an even spread if we do it right. And I have a feeling that if you're watching this video, then you're probably being very cautious, so you shouldn't have any problem spreading the thermal paste evenly and tightening down the cooler evenly. And once we've got each of the screws in the hole and the cooler installed into the bracket, we'll take a nylon washer and just gently tighten on the thumb screws and do that for all four screws before we start tightening anything down. If you've got big fingers, this part can be a little tricky. I helped uh, to use it, the screwdriver to line everything up and actually turn the screws just a little bit. And once we've got each of the thumb screws on, start with the corner that you feel is the loosest or the, the corner.
V10 mounted to a graphics card with a VRM and VRAM heat spreader still intact without having to cut or deface or demolish or destroy any components on your graphics card which if you plan to resell in the future uh, is going to hurt the resell value. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe and check out BYOGamingPC.com for more tips on how to build your own gaming PC, home theater PC, or network attached storage. Thank you.